guys and thank you so much for clicking on this video if you are new here my name is Shanice Mombire thank you for visiting my page um, thank you to all the returning subscribers thank you for the love don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and drop your comment down below and if you are new here don't forget to click on the subscription button and click on that notification bell so you can be notified every time I upload a video so today I'll basically be talking about my birth experience in a public hospital. Um, yeah, just the mention of that, I can imagine that a lot of thoughts go through your mind. At the time, I didn't have medical aid when I was pregnant and, um, well, due to give birth. I didn't have medical aid and um, COVID had obviously affected a lot of things. So my option was to give birth in a public hospital. So uh, just to be, you know, acquainted with how or just to get information basically on how or what to expect i watched so many youtube videos of people sharing their different experiences in public hospitals and i was obviously expecting the worst based on the videos that i watched i was expecting the worst and i just wanted to prepare myself and make sure that i have everything that i need so that i don't have you know to depend much on um system and everything so i had um all the baby stuff that i needed i had all my things that i would need and um on the 3rd of september which was the day that i was due to give uh no i was not due to give birth i was due to give birth on the 7th based on the doctor and sonar reports i was given a due date of the 7th of september 2021 and so on the second first of all on the second i went to the hospital you know just to get familiar with the place you know where exactly the hospital is which entrance i would use because obviously being a first time mom or giving birth for the first time i didn't know what to expect i didn't know how i was gonna be how hectic it was gonna be so i just wanted to know where everything is what i need to do where i need to go what i need to bring and all of that so i can just be sorted from the get-go and then on so the third of september i was 39 weeks i think 39 weeks and three days um yeah that's how far i was 39 weeks three days and like around 3 a.m i started feeling this funny pain that i wasn't sure what it was so then obviously okay i figured i guess it's time i started timing my contractions i had an app um, to do that i started timing my contractions and i sat up from like 3 a.m until about six my husband was sleeping at the time i just sat like yeah i just sat um experiencing whatever i was experiencing it wasn't quite an interesting pain but not as hectic as i was told it would be my sister told me that when i start feeling a pain that i've never felt before then i should know that it's time but yeah i so i was having this cramp kind of pain i've never really had hectic period pain so i wouldn't really say it's like period pains though it is somewhat like period pains yeah so i was i experienced that from about 3 a.m and then at like 6 30 then i woke my husband up to tell him that hey i don't think you'd be going into work today i think today is the day so he got up we got ready um i had everything sorted except the snacks i hadn't bought like snacks and things that i would uh, need for the hospital because i was advised by other moms who'd given birth to just have some snacks ready because you don't know how long you'll be in hospital for and also because they just offer like basic food i think three times a day you'd also maybe just want to nibble here and there so i um i hadn't bought my snacks yet i would bought everything else except the snacks so after getting ready we passed by um a supermarket close by to get snacks and you know just a few things though mine was not quite a few i bought juice yeah and quite a lot of snacks and water and other things so when we got to the hospital because this was still during covid not really the hectic part of covid but i think we were in about level three or so or two i'm not i don't quite remember but we were still in covid still wearing the masks and all of that so getting to the hospital then i was told obviously from the day before that i was going to be alone uh, my husband would not be able to come in with me which was quite heartbreaking for both of us but yeah he walked me um to the door and when i got there we signed in they take my check my temperature and all of that and one of the ladies then assisted me in sure this was 
it was overwhelming experiencing this thing by myself and my husband would not be there you know with me through it so yeah at this point i got a bit teary and overwhelmed by the whole situation i was fine all along until this moment um i'm still having contractions throughout um i think they were about five minutes or so apart um my contractions were about five minutes the whole time so you know people usually say they would experience contractions like every 20 minutes and then it gets to 10 minutes and so on and so on mine were consistent throughout which is a bit i guess i don't know interesting but anyway yeah so the lady at the entrance walked in with me walked me to the ward um i got signed in and then i had to wait um i was given a chair to sit and i sat and then in about 10 minutes i think um then I was called in to open a file because it was my first time at the hospital. I had to open a file, um, fill in all my details. I was still smiling and laughing at the time. The pain had not gotten very serious. I was still having cramps, but manageable. Um, yeah, so I filled in all my details. They weighed me, checked me, all of that. Um, and I was done. And then I had to wait again. Uh, and I think the second wait was about... 15 20 minutes and at this time you know the pain of the contractions was gradually increasing and i remember i was sitting in a in a corridor and yeah on a steel bench like chair without a back support which was still okay i guess um i wasn't in a bush or anything so it was still manageable um yeah so after waiting about 10 15 minutes about 20 minutes let me just say then i was called in for them to check how far i am how dilated i am so i went in oh and this was this was something because all along i'd been sitting or if i'm not comfortable i just you know lean sideways and stuff now i had to lie on my back for them to check how you know how dilated i am and yeah no that was not a nice nice experience i don't know how Mm, it was just so painful having contractions and somebody's hand inside of you and oh uh, okay yeah it was not a good experience but i guess it's part of the process i guess it's part of what needs to be done so she was checking how far how far dilated i am and i think at the time i was just about two or three centimeters dilated and i'm just like what how long am i gonna be here um i got to the hospital i think around 10 and the checking of how dilated I am happened around 11 a.m. So after they checked how dilated I am, then they officially admitted me. Um, so after checking that, then I was given one of those, um, I think I'll put a picture up, one of those tag thingies with my name on it and whatever. And I was then taken to a ward where there were about, I think four, five other ladies. Yeah, it was like a six room ward so i was given a bed by the window and this was around lunch time so at this time i the pains are getting a bit hectic now like when they come i'm trying to breathe and you know yeah just just trying to embrace it my husband is still outside waiting you know to, to hear what's going on because i hadn't been able to communicate to them from the checks and everything so that i'm trying to also update him to just tell him what's happening where i am and all of that and then um it was lunchtime so they brought food and the food i think was chicken with rice and gravy which was okay but you know obviously it's not a ho it's not a restaurant so i'm not expecting like five star type of food but it was okay i was just not in it i was not able to eat I tried taking a bit of a spoon. I knew I was hungry because I had not eaten and I was awake from like 3 a.m. going through the contractions and everything. So I did try to have like a spoon, but I just couldn't. I think I was in the ward for about an hour and a half. And then um, I was taken to a separate room by myself. All the while, mind you, all the while while I was in the ward um, with the other ladies, they are fine. Like, I feel like I was going through the most. They are fine. Um, no one's having pains. One of the ladies seemed like something was going on. She was having a bit of pain, but, you know, she seemed 
very okay. One of the other ladies was on her phone the entire time and she was, you know, she wasn't feeling anything. I was the one going through the most. And then there was one beeping sound of, I don't know whether it was a machine or what. And that thing was just, uh, you know, when something is irritating you and you are going through pain and you just want everything to be quiet. Yeah, that, that was me at that point. Um, after like an hour and a half of waiting in the in that ma- in maternity ward, I don't know what ward it's called, but there were six other ladies who were pregnant who were due to give birth. Um, yeah, I was the one going through the most. So they took me out of that ward and took me to a separate room by myself. All the while, while we're waiting, you could hear people screaming like somebody's delivering. I was just like, oh my word is this what i will be going through (laughs) anyway yeah so you could hear people screaming and 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 i was just like oh my word am i ready for this anyway i was taken to a separate room um where they checked me again to see how dilated i was i think this was around 12 o'clock now if not 12 30 or so because it was about an hour an hour and a half so um i went into the separate room i put my things down i had like three bags guys yo that's another thing i think i i had overpacked for everything and i had too much food with me but anyway not a trade smash i just had to be moving my things up and down and it was just a lot so i moved my things to the single room where yeah i was alone thank god because there were no beeping sounds there were not like there weren't other people around so it was better but here the pains got intense yo guys giving birth is something it's something beautiful blessings but yeah it's something so yeah um being in the separate room i wasn't walking around now i just sat and i was just trying to breathe and go through it and you know praying to god for strength trusting just you know i was just reminding myself of a lot of things you know what the scripture says you know just trying to encourage myself and know that as much as this seems like it's the worst thing ever you know god will see me through they did they asked me to lie down to check how far dilated i was and at, i think at this that point i was around um four centimeters if i'm not mistaken four or five somewhere there um i, I did make a bit of progress so it seemed like i wasn't making progress so i sat i'm still hearing people screaming from the neighboring rooms people are screaming all manner of things like they're going through the most and yeah i was just sitting there wondering who sent me (laughs) the nurses left me at 12 and they told me that they'll come back and check me at 2 p.m they wanted to come back and check how far i was at 2 p.m so at 2 p.m after i i've gone through it i've been moaning and you know going through the pains the nurses then come back and i was like i think i'm ready i think i'm ready to give birth so obviously the nurses have experience in these things and they're not even paying much attention to what i'm saying they're like okay lie down let's check how far you are so when the nurse then made me lie down and she checked she's like okay this one is ready i was like thank god but again what is about to happen so she says i'm ready now they roll in this trolley with i guess things that they need for delivery she calls in the student nurses and other nurses that um i guess usually are there to get to help you give birth so they all come in and this is over a process of like what 10 minutes or so 10 15 minutes of them coming in preparing the stuff and i'm still trying to breathe and say okay you know i'm at this point i was literally talking to myself saying you know you can do it you can make it through you're strong i had watched the youtube video of a lady who was doing that and i don't know at, at that <laughs> i didn't plan to to confess it all out but i found myself just saying okay you can do it you can go through it you can you know you're strong you'll be able to make it through hold on we're almost there you're getting there i was encouraging myself so I, it was a bit funny to the nurses but anyway so i had to lie down and they were showing me how how to position myself my legs all of that to get ready to give birth guys guys anywho yeah they made me lie down they positioned me to give birth and they're like okay are you ready to push with the next contraction um you know try pushing 
and the next contraction comes and I'm pushing and it feels like nothing is happening this baby I thought maybe I, I'll just push and the baby will pop out or whatever and they're like no you're not pushing position your legs like this like guys it's so painful going through the contractions and the position that they asked me to sit in like it's like a squatting position but obviously lying down so I have to hold my knees while I'm lying down and the contractions and this and that I'm just like I can't but I can because I have to and you know I can get through this and I can do it so yeah they 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 trying to tell me no stop stop stretching your legs sit like this do this push so I'm pushing and they're like ah this ma- this mother's not pushing and I'm like what are you saying I am obviously I'm not saying this out out loud because you know I'm at my best behavior because of all the horror stories I've heard so I'm trying by all means to just mind my business get this done and get out so they're trying to tell me you know do this do that and I am trying but it just felt like this baby is not coming out so i think i pushed about three times and the lady's like i have to what did she say something is not expanding so i have to cut and i'm like no 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 i'm not ready (laughs) yeah so she takes a scissor and it feels like a pinch when she's cutting you i think she cut me like twice it feels like a pinch but a very painful pinch so she cut me and she's like okay the next contraction this baby has to come out you have to do your best push with all that you have the next contraction comes i push and i would not stop pushing i just kept pushing until finally i think the head comes out and they're like yes you know well done now the body needs to come out the, you know try to push with all that you have so that the baby can come out he's already here go push so when it's time to push i push again and the baby comes out and i was just like thank you jesus now when i say thank you jesus the nurse turns she's like what do you mean thank you jesus we are the ones who are we're the ones working here what do you mean thank you jesus is jesus the one who made you give birth i'm like hey anyway i didn't answer her because i i knew who i was trusting in and i knew where my strength is coming from so i was just like wow okay i didn't know people could be so offended by you know somebody else's faith but anyway yeah she's she's rattling on about how we are the ones who made you we are the ones who are working here what do you mean thank you jesus is jesus the one that helps you give birth so after i say thank you jesus then i'm like oh thank you guys so much you know i'm very emotional i'm overwhelmed um the baby came out thank god it's a boy um they're saying your baby's okay uh yeah so i was just overwhelmed and i'm just thanking god at that point for good uh, safe delivery unmedicated like nothing everything was natural and i'm just you know grateful to god for finally bringing bringing this human being that we've been waiting for for so long yeah so the baby comes out the same lady i think she's like she was like the chief nurse the main person i don't know whether they're called nurses or or what are they called the people that help you give birth yeah i'll i'll write the name down i'm sure midwife yes i don't know if if she's the chief midwife or chief nurse or whatever but she was the main person so she lifts up the baby say okay it's a healthy baby boy he's okay we just noticed that he has um uh, uh, a hematoma so he's fine everything's fine but the umbilical cord that connects me and him there was a bit of like a not a blood clot but there was blood within it that was held so they didn't want to cut off his part of the umbilical cord immediately they just wanted to observe and yeah Noah cried for like two seconds two three seconds and that was it and he kept quiet so I kept looking over to check okay is he still breathing is he fine is he okay like it was just so shocking and overwhelming for me i was so happy so grateful to god that you know this baby came out fine with 10 toes and 10 fingers and he has two ears and two eyes and everything's working and i was just like you know what god is great i think he was born at 245 he was born 3.4 kgs and he was about 80 something centimeters think 60 is it 60 or 80 i don't know yeah so once the doctor was done checking him then i was they they gave me the child 
and I put him on my chest, you know, just looking at this tiny creature that you belong to me, you know, you're mine. God has entrusted you with that. God has entrusted me with an entire human being. It was overwhelming, but very great. Overall, my overall experience of giving birth in a public hospital was actually not bad because I got good service. People attended to me. I wasn't left hanging or, you know, anything like that. The hospital was not overcrowded. It was clean. The nurse's service was good, though they won't like just attend to you at your request. They will come to you when they want to come. Whether you're ready to give birth or not, they will come when they are ready. When they told you they would come, that's when they'll come. So I'm glad that my experience was not as horrific as some of some of the people's experiences that I've heard. Um, I remember with my sister and her first child, um, she didn't want to spend too much money going to a private hospital, so she opted to go to a public hospital. And she was given somebody else's child. I don't know how that happened. I guess maybe the hospital was overcrowded, and after delivery, they take your baby somewhere else. Or I don't know what happened. But she ended up with somebody else's child. Thank God she realized that while she, while she could, st while something could still be done, and they were able to find her child and give her back her child. So I thank God that I had my own room. You know, my child was right beside me the entire time. He never went anywhere. He was checked. Everything was done. The nurse's service was good. Um, you know, yeah, they did everything that they were supposed to do. After the delivery, I was stitched and I had then a conversation with the nurse who was offended by my thanking God. And, you know, she, was, she actually turned out to be, you know, quite a nice person. We spoke for a bit. You know, she gave me good attention. And, yeah, my general... Um, experience in a public hospital was actually quite great um the only thing that's not the best is obviously their food and um the bathrooms it's obviously i guess you know a public hospital so everything is public that's the only thing that i was a bit finicky about everything is clean though so you know yeah it's well maintained so i guess to an extent i felt safe i felt i was in safe hands my child was in safe hands because yeah, when they were done with me, the doctor came to check Noah. He found that he's fine, everything's okay, and yeah. So yes, guys, that was my um, take on giving birth in a public hospital in South Africa. It's not as horrific as everyone says because I walked in alive and I walked out with my baby alive. We were taken care of. Everything was good, so I don't think all of them are, are, are bad and the nurses are all bad. Most of them, you know. They're human beings, so yeah, that was my take, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video till the end. Don't forget to give it a, a thumbs up. Share your experience in the comments. Um, if you're an expecting mother, share your comments. And if you've already given birth, feel free to share how your experience was in, in, in you know, your, your delivery experience was and how your experience was giving birth in a public hospital. Be it in this country or in another country, it doesn't matter, but yeah. We just thank God for life and and good health. So yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up for the last time. Don't forget to subscribe. Share with your expecting friends. Share with your cousins, your loved ones. And just spread the love. Love you guys so much. Thank you once again. Mwah.